speech is using acronyms. So I thought I should do a speech with acronyms. So mine, is, maybe you've heard of the three R's, but this one's four. <laughs> Um, and I was reminded of the four R's just uh, last week. My son got in trouble at school. He does that every so often. He's a really good kid, but he's not particularly passive or agreeable or, or, I don't know. He's, he's, I don't know where he got this. He's kind of like a rebel without a cause. So I have no idea how he got that. But, so, when he got in trouble, um, I wanted to talk to him a little bit about when he wronged some other kid. How do you make up for that? Because in our lives, we all wrong people. And it seems to me as adults, it's fairly hard for us to say, even I'm sorry. A lot of people justify the thing they did wrong, much less they're not that comfortable with saying I'm sorry. And, that, and even saying you're sorry, I, I, I believe, is not necessarily going very far. And so years ago, I had a uh, <coughs> mentor, and he taught me something about the four R's. And he used an example. And the first one was remorse. An example he used was, imagine if you were out, if your house was broken into. So somebody came to your house and kicked <coughs> out the front door in and, and stole your stereo and your grills. And say it was like $1,500. And you came home and you saw your front door was kicked open. And your stuff is missing. Now you're angry, you want revenge, and so forth. So, so after buying the new stuff, a couple weeks later, somebody knocks on your door, you open it up, and there's this guy. And he comes up and goes, I'm really sorry, but I'm the guy who robbed all your stuff. And I just want you to know I feel really bad about it. I'm really sorry. And he walks off. Now, I don't know, depending on your personality, your reactions will be different. Maybe Fred would chase him down and tackle him in the front yard, you know, call the police. Maybe if you're a woman, you might run out and try to get your license number. But you'd like, this guy broke your front door down, and you're still mad about it. You're still sort of some kind of possible, but then you'd like to just have the police count to. Even though you said you're sorry, it didn't do that much good. Well, imagine if he came up the next time, same guy, and he gave you the reasons why he broke into your house. So he goes, I'm really, really sorry. And he goes, and I broke into your house because I have a wife and I have a kid and I couldn't pay the rent. So I stole your stuff, took it down and hopped it, and that's how I paid the rent. And then he walks off. Now this time Fred might still tackle him. You know, I don't think there's he'd still be mad. He's still he still broke into your house. There's no excuse for this kind of behavior. When somebody does you a real wrong, you don't really just forgive them because now they tell you why they did it. I mean, they might be sorry, they might tell you why, but do you really forgive them? I don't know. So I'm not sure you maybe reach that point. So um, what if he also came the third time to your door and I don't really know if the third R was rehabilitated. My mentor told me just so long ago I kind of had to make that one. So imagine now the third time he comes up and he says, I'm really sorry. This could be in any situation you have where you wrong something. And you tell him you're really sorry. And then you explain why you did it. And then you say you're doing something to make it better. Maybe this guy's going to Robbers Anonymous. He goes, I'm going every week to Robbers Anonymous. I'm learning, I'm learning not to harm people. And I'm learning a lot of the other reasons not to. It's harming me. I mean, when I rob something from someone, even if I need it for the rent or a good reason, it still harms my soul on some level. And, and kind of like going to uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, you realize there's all sorts of other issues maybe with this. So he's working hard. Not only is he sorry, not only is he trying to uh, explain that, now he's really trying to work not to do it. So off he walks again. So you chase him down, Fred? I don't know. Uh, he's getting kind of more gray. And then finally, is restitution. So now he walks up to your door. He does the first three things really, really well. 
And he goes, you know, I feel so bad about it that I used to paint houses. And I know this look at your house, it looks really bad. So not only am I sorry about what I did, I'm going to do something about it. And since there's paint peeling on the house, I'm going to repaint your house. And here's, here's a color sample thing. I'm going to repaint it exactly like it looks. And here's some bids. I got some bids. It averaged about 1800 bucks for other people to do it. So I'm going to paint your house unless you want the colors it is, unless you want different colors. So if you want different colors, just put trim on T on one and the walls on the other, leave it on the front porch because I'll be here tomorrow. And so he's just told me he's sorry, and now he's telling me this. And it, it still might call the police, I don't know. So then you, you say, for example, you went on vacation, and two weeks later you come back and your house is now painted. Looks great. Looks like a brand new job. So this guy's gone all four of these steps to make it up to you. And so my mentor, when he went through this, he was trying to point out that when you do harm someone, there are saying you're sorry might make a big difference, but a lot of times it doesn't really project your level of concern. It doesn't really solve the problem. It doesn't make you feel like this person saying they're sorry, does that mean they're sorry? And it's pretty easy to say. And to explain why you did it, it's pretty easy to do. To go these all these different steps, maybe when you're done, the other person really believes you are sorry. Maybe they really believe you did feel like you're wrong. And maybe in the end, if you needed someone to watch your house for two weeks while you're out of town, you might call that guy. He might be the guy you'd rather have watch your house than your own kid because, you know, <laughs> even if he robs you, he'll take care of it. He'll come back and make it right. So that was what my mentor taught me, and that was uh, my example.